Jusa Thingna. I'm a young scientist fellow here at the Center for Theoretical Physics of Complex Systems. And um, as a theoretical physicist, my job here is to look at quantum properties of systems far from equilibrium. The, the whole idea is that when you're looking at this cup of coffee or you look at a single molecule, when that is in presence of air around it, the air molecules are much smaller than the coffee. And what they end up doing is they start hitting this coffee molecule randomly. So overall, this has actually formed a very interesting sub-area of physics where people look at uh, things called as open systems, where systems of interest are interacting with an environment and they are either transferring particles or energy with the environment. This is exactly how our electronic devices also work. Uh, imagine you have a small transistor which is somewhere and you have to connect two uh, probes to this transistor which would help to pass an electronic current and these are actually acting as an environment for that little transistor in the middle. So the study of open systems is actually very fundamental in us understanding many of the technological devices and applications in today's world as well. I, I think as a theorist in general, we should keep one thing always in mind, and this is obviously my humble opinion, that uh, physics is an experimental science. So uh, when a theorist makes his theories or makes some predictions, uh, there has to be an experimental aspect attached to it. And our job is you know, not to provide abstract theories which are completely inapplicable, but rather provide support even to experimentalists in many cases to help them predict new phenomena. As a result, what theory does is that it helps us build a basic understanding of the subject. What we explored there were the quantum symmetries and we found that using these quantum symmetries, we can actually build devices which can help control the heat and electronic currents in these little quantum systems. Now, um, I know it might sound like a lot of heavy words at this stage. Imagine you have to build a device which is working on quantum principles. So your computer today, although it's a classical device, it has a lot of small components like a transistor, um, resistors and so on and so forth. You would require for a quantum device similar small components. And if you can control these currents at this miniature scale of this, uh, or this quantum scale, you would basically be able to build this little quantum uh, sort of uh, sub-device, which is known as a quantum switch. And this could then later on couple with other things like a quantum resistor, a quantum transistor, to make a much bigger device of applicable use. Uh, it's not only my ultimate goal, but an ultimate goal for many of the researchers in this field. I think one of the historical moments we had was the Industrial Revolution. During this period, some of the most instrumental work in understanding the steam engines was actually done by physicists. Today, a lot of us feel that um, we could translate these ideas that were studied from this equilibrium thermodynamics that Carnot and uh, you know, Thomson and Joule and many others did, we can translate them to the quantum regime. And this basic understanding of how thermodynamics works in the quantum regime is going to be instrumental. And we really hope that this leads to a sort of a quantum revolution, which is similar to the industrial revolution. 